All right, so group ride, group ride. Good spacing, everything. Good job on the spacing. Uh-oh, we're increasing speed. It's a long turn. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh. Okay, so we're going to go a little wide. Now, watch the bump. This is why you lift your butt up on, on speed bumps and other objects in the road. Watch. It's going to hit it. It's going to eject you up. So that right there is going to be a lot like hitting a speed bump too fast. That's why you lift your butt up a little bit. It's an emergency move. Um, obviously, uh, we're going off road, so uh, not a good deal. So as soon as that happens, that's that right side, right side, right side mechanism of injury. So you get possible shoulder injuries to the right, collarbone, like that one guy on the track, uh, hip, um, your head, uh, your ankle could be smashed underneath a 500-pound vehicle. So you're starting to rotate, back protector, your head, neck, back. Now, not full gear. He's got a helmet, though, so that's really good. Uh, if you do want to have a chance to win a ton of uh, gear, click the link in the Chitty Chat chat or in the description for a chance to win a $400, a $250, or $150 Revzilla gift card. So this is where you rescue another rider, too, using smart rider principles. Rescue a rider. You good? You good? Lay down, lay down, lay down. Let's stay down. Good. Gotta stay down. Do you have to call anybody, you think? No. No? Okay. I just got the wound to it. We're good. No, no, we're fine. Yeah. Good. Okay. We got it. My main concern is him, so I would be double checking, making sure he is okay. That thing is already destroyed. Oh, you can ride it home. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He's still connected. Yeah. Well, the fact that he's standing is that no, that's not him. That's not him. It's not the end of the world. It could be a lot worse. It could, yeah, it could have been a lot worse. I want to see where he's at. Is he standing on his own? So that's not him because he was wearing like a a red pantalones. Um, my concern is him. Okay, so you can hear the breathing. Let's go over this a little bit. Let's go over it a little bit. All right, so we're riding with a group of friends. I said it was good spacing, so you have good. Uh, you could do whatever you need to do. The problem is, you know, with just with this, like, what's your vision? You see how you can barely see around the person? I keep using this as an example. Let's say you're this close to the person in front of you. Look what you can see around. You can barely see me, but the further you get away, the further you get away, the more and more you can see around that person. So I like to maybe be here, not here, this close to somebody when I'm riding, but more like right here so I can kind of see around them. And then even then, I'm going to move over a little bit to the side. You see, now you can see me fully. So I'm going to move over in different lane positions for the best line of sight and best vision. So that's kind of what I would be doing. I'd actually separate this a little bit more, and you can actually use your Cardo Pack Talk uh, with the mesh system using the link in the description. Um, we're going to move over a little bit right here. Now, it's 45 miles an hour. I don't know what their speed is. I'm assuming that they're doing the speed limit. So when we talk about corners, we should be in orange stage because corners are very dangerous for motorcycles, uh, motorcycle riders, just like uh, intersections. But see, this is all you could see around that corner. So within this area, you should be able to stop or swerve. That is the only vision you have. You can't assume that it's clear past this. You cannot assume it's clear because if you do that, you're going to ride like it's clear. And when you ride like it's clear, you're going to keep increasing speed. You're going to get complacent, which means that you're just kind of like, oh, nothing's ever happened, so it's not going to happen to me, so I don't have to be precautious or have cautious stuffs. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing it. So the thing is, you cannot assume it's clear. Always assume there's something around that corner to get you, just like in a haunted house. Always assume that there's a little clown with a chainsaw around that corner ready to grab you. So assume that. Don't assume that it's clear. Assume that there is something there. So you're modulating your speed to uh, for that situation. All right. So now we see even more. So even better, right? So oh wait, no. Let's go back. I think it goes to right here. So now we see even more. Right. I don't care what this person's doing or this person's doing. I care about what I can see. Remember, ride your own ride. So now I can see all this. Great. Great. Okay. But why is the corner still turning? So this is like a full, almost like a wide U-turn. So I'm still going to modulate my speed. It's not a 90-degree turn where it goes like this and I can increase my speed, which it sounds like they're doing right here. 
because you can go in here. It's like, oh, my nose is pointed to where the exit is over here. I can increase my speed. Here, it's like, oh, uh, I'm like this, like a typical turn. I'm going to increase my speed, but here's the exit. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. And then you go super wide. So you have to know what you're looking for. You have to know what you're looking for. And you have to modulate your speed based off your vision. That's the biggest thing, guys, the vision. Vision, 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 vision. So now at this point, it's, oh, we're going a little wide. Now, what do you do in that situation? Gently roll off the throttle and get better body position. You see how he's kind of a little crossed up. His butt's hanging off, but his upper body's doing this. So that if you're going to be going this fast, you need to have good body position. And you can take that in an advanced class. Okay, so go to your local uh, motorcycle educational center, whatever it is, take an advanced class. This is where they teach these things is in the advanced class. This isn't a basic fundamental skill. This is more of an advanced skill because we're going fast, okay? The basic fundamental skills are just to get you from point A to point B, be a commuter, you know, have a little bit of fun, but don't go any crazy. It's designed for that speed limit. It's designed for, for not being this crazy enthusiast of speed. If you want to take an advanced skill, it's going to help you stay safer as a, as a commuter, but it's also going to teach you a few of these things too. So go take an advanced skill so you're not having to do this. At that point, you, as the person in the back, roll off the throttle and just assume he's going to crash. You don't want to run into him. As soon as you witness that, did a good job. This rider did a great job. Okay, as soon as you see this, you already saw the mechanism. You saw everything that happened. Go ahead and get your trauma kit out. I've seen that happen way too many times. You good? You good? Lay down, lay down, lay down. That's him trying to get air, wind knocked out. Now, the wind could be knocked out just by, you know, the, the forces pushing the wind out, pushing his, his, his available air out. It works off of pressures inside your body. I don't want to go too much into that with the diaphragm and everything and how you breathe and what the mechanism of it. The thing is, it is out of his system. He can't breathe. It could have been from a broken bone. It could have, like his ribs could have been shattered. Um, he could be having a flail segment across his chest. The simple fact that he's having difficulty breathing should be a cause of alarm. How it happened is what you need to assess. If it's a non-issue, like it's just it just got knocked out and then it's going to come back in naturally because there's no broken mechanical pieces like bones and maybe a popped lung and all these different things or a lobe of his lung, then it's fine. But the thing is you need to find out because if you don't and you just assume – then you're going to have problems because you haven't fixed it. And then he's going to start to decline uh, with a bunch of different problems. So unzip the jacket, uh, palpate. So you're kind of touching, you're doing your assessment. Go, go through an accident scene.org class, uh, do an assessment and figure out what it is. And if it's a non-issue, you don't find any deformities or anything like that. Contusions, abrasions, punctures, tenders, lacerations, or swelling, anything like that. Uh, then just kind of support him getting back his air and his oxygen, his breathing. At that point, let's stay down. Gotta yeah, stay down. Do you have to call anybody? You think? No. No. Okay. So he's got his air back. We're so good. he's good. So at that point, it's like, okay, he's moving on his own. I wouldn't want him to move. Um, I would still want to do my assessment, and then from there, when I feel comfortable with that person or my friend moving. Um, I'd let them move. And since they are my friend or I, I know that person, I'd be asking questions based off his cognitive uh, function. So, you know, if, if he's not acting like my friend is nor normally acting, I would uh, make sure uh, we get EMS on scene and we get him to the hospital so he can get his brain scanned. Gaming Penguin, how do you join? Click the link that's in the chat. Uh, $5 to enter the giveaway, but uh, each tier gets better chances. Um, but check out the rules because you'll find out how to, to get more entries.